Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today, Gain a Competitive Edge for Career Success Before You Arrive in Canada. I can see many have joined us from different parts of the world. I can uh, see Tunisia, Kenya, Nigeria, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, uh, even someone who's uh, landing, who's going to land in Canada in three days uh, is, has joined the webinar. So uh, congrats. This is a great step on uh, your successful immigration journey to, uh, to Canada to arrive prepared for successful integration into the workforce, into the society here. So today during our webinar, you will hear insights from a, a newcomer settlement expert and uh, immigrant professionals who have lived experiences in Canada and could help you with their experience and their tips and their advice. Uh, today's webinar is brought to you by uh, New Canadians, uh, an information network for newcomers. In Canada, you can watch us on Omni Television. Uh, online, you can catch us on our website or our YouTube channel. And the webinar is in collaboration with uh, SOPA, one of the pre-arrival services that help immigrants uh, arrive prepared uh, in Canada. My name is uh, Gerard Kalejian, and uh, I'm uh, delighted to welcome uh, today's uh, uh, presenters, Raimonda Delialisi, uh, Foreign Credential Recognition Navigator uh, from SOPA. And uh, later uh, in uh, our webinar, we will also meet uh, two amazing immigrant professionals, Vivian Atiba, a former SOPA client and administrative and customer service professional, as well as Gautam Viswanathan, who is a journalist and is also part of the uh, New Canadians team. So both will share their experiences. So. Uh, I'm sure it will be very helpful, very beneficial to all of you. So if you have uh, uh, questions about uh, the topic today or about uh, uh, whatever Raimonda will present about or uh, Gautam and Vivian will uh, will uh, talk about, uh, you're encouraged to ask questions. Uh, use the Q&A tab on Zoom uh, to ask your questions and uh, we will uh, direct them to the presenters. And uh, if you're following us on YouTube where this webinar is being live streamed, you just type in the chat box. So gain a competitive edge for career success in Canada, career success before you arrive in Canada. So uh, I'm uh, welcome once again, uh, Raymonda. Thank you, Raymonda. Thank you, Gerald, for the wonderful um, introduction and welcome everybody. We will start with our presentation for today. I will be sharing my screen. And as Gerald said, please, uh, if you have questions, just write them in the chat box and we'll be answering them at the end of the presentation. I hope everyone is able to see my screen. Yes, we can see the screen. Very Perfect. Much. Before I start with the presentation, I would like to take a moment and acknowledge the people whose land we are on today. In the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, Kainai, Pikani, the Tsutina, the Stony Nakota Nations, the Métis Nation, Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. As Gerald said, today we're going to discuss various topics that we find highly relevant and we hope you will gain some valuable insights. Topics we will discuss today are how being bilingual can benefit your career in Canada, unlocking your career potential in Canada with bridging programs, enrolling for relevant micro-credentials, networking, informational interviews, and signing up for pre-arrival services. So everyone sit back and enjoy the presentation. How being bilingual can benefit your career. With technology booming, working for a company from anywhere is very common now. For example, a business analyst in Calgary can work for a big company, a big accounting company in Montreal. As, locator, as location matters less, 
being able to work in multiple languages is crucial in Canada. Over 7 million people speak French as their first language, with over 1 million living outside Quebec, making up almost 20% of the population needing French services. Finding a job in Canada is tougher than ever. But according to Statistics Canada, there are one 1.5 million job seekers, making it super competitive. Employers can be picky with so many applicants for limited positions. And recent studies show that actually knowing both official languages is a big plus for Canadian workers. So if you're job hunting and if you speak a bit of French, dust all those French language skills because they finally might come in handy. All right, so we're going to discuss more in details about this. The power of bilingual employees and how important is that? Being bilingual brings advantages to Canadians from all backgrounds. Canadian surveys confirm that employers consider bilingualism an asset for their employees. In a survey by Ipsos for Canadian parents for French in 2008, found out that 84% of employers um, found out that those employers considered knowledge for both English and French to be an asset or gave preference to English and French bilingual candidates. Furthermore, 81% considered their bilingual employees to be a valuable asset to their organization. As I mentioned, studies confirm that bilingual students or bilingual job candidates offer potential employers hard technical language skills as well as soft skills, such as increased mental adaptability, flexibility in tax execution, attention to detail, and many useful social communication skills. In different parts of the country though, and depending on the job and industry that you're looking for, the need for workers who speak both languages, English and French, can be higher or can be lower. This means bilingual candidates may have a stronger advantage in some areas compared to others based on the local demand or based on the supply. Now, what you're going to see now on the screen is a very interesting um, chart. Um, this is the rank top uh, Canada's top occupation requiring bilingual applicants. Workopolis also provided this analysis on the top 10 of the top 10 occupation where bilingual applicants have a competitive advantage three are in finance one the first one is billing administrator then comes collection clerk then financial administrator and then we have information technology or information management then we have sales and marketing and human resources it's so very interesting to see that finance plays a more important role over and above sales and marketing and that of services in uh, uh, information management or human resources in today's global workforce, employers are hiring from a diverse and multicultural pool of candidates, and they are looking for versatile employees with various skills who can work well in different cultures, solve problems, and multitask. And I have to say, I have to say that knowing a second language directly ties into these qualities. Now, what you're going to see on the screen is another uh, interested figure, and this is from the Canadian census. And according to this, people who can speak both languages, English and French in Canada, have better job opportunities. In Quebec in 2011, those who spoke both languages earned about 37% more than those who spoke only one language. In the rest of Canada, people who spoke both languages, they 
earned 15% more compared to those who spoke only one language. And that is from the Statistic Canada done in 2011. Um, and also on the screen, you're going to see a remote. That's a screenshot that I took recently, December 2023. 20, uh, uh, remote French-speaking jobs in Ontario. That, that's for the province of Ontario. And as you can see, it's always the uh, uh, those candidates who speak both languages, they have higher chances of finding jobs. Now, I'm going to show you guys a little bit um, what are the economic benefits for the individual, for the bilingual individual, for you? Knowing two languages brings many advantages. First is job security. Speaking two languages acts like um, a layoff in insurance, making it more likely to keep that job. Better job opportunities, bilingual people usually get higher wages, find jobs more easily, and have access to well paying careers. And of course, we have career flexibility. Being bilingual makes it easier to switch career and move around in the job market. And last, economic benefits to you as an immigrant, you can learn the language for free in Canada. And I'm going to show you later on, I'm going to share with you a few uh, links that you can um, find this. So here on the screen, you're going to see, but please don't take a screenshot or anything. We're going to share these links with you at the end of the presentation. So here I have included some links uh, to the free programs that the Canadian government offers for you to acquire basic language skills for both French and English. And as I said, everyone, please, uh, I'm going to share everything. These uh, links will be shared with you at the end of the presentation. Moving on. Bridging training programs. We are going to start to talk about the bridge training programs and how they work to help newcomers and internationally trained professionals adapt their work experience, professional credentials, and education so they may work in a regulated or non-regulated industry in Canada. We're going to talk about what they offer, how to apply, and want, and what to consider when applying and when choosing one. Now, what do bridging programs offer? Moving to Canada, of course, brings excitement, brings fear, but of course, career opportunities. But you have to know that many certifications or diplomas earned abroad may not be recognized here in Canada. For some newcomers, additional training or education is necessary to continue their careers. The bridging programs help eligible immigrants by providing skills training, work experience, and essential skills to facilitate uh, employment in their field. While the program includes a workplace language component in it, the primary focus is on the skills training. Service offered include career switching, job search assistant, networking, mentorship, certification, exam preparation, and also they offer work placement so you can gain Canadian work experience. The Canadian government collaborates with the provincial governments and nonprofit organizations like our organization and other educational institutions to offer employment support to these programs. Now, who are these programs for? Who are bridging programs for? There are different program requirements and eligibility criteria. The programs are developed by providers and each program may offer different timeframes, course content and class sizes. All programs though provide industry recognized training and unpaid work experience to help you prepare for the job opportunities. And also they, were, they offer workplace essential skills to help you thrive in learning, work, and life. The target audience are newcomers who already have a combined post-secondary international education. They might have work experience and also they have a high level of English proficiency. 
Also, they cover professions in demand. For example, I have shared here with you, I have uh, the IT information and technology bridging program that we have here in Alberta at the CCIS. And I'll show you a screenshot of that. Uh, so most of these programs do cover professions in demand. And one profession in demand right now is the IT information and technology uh, program. And on the screen, you're going to see an example of this program that uh, our, uh, uh, the Calgary Catholic um, Society offers for you, which is called the Information and Technology Bridging Program. This is just an example. But each province, I have to mention, each province and territory in Canada has its own bridging programs. They are, uh, they are detailed on their websites. Some programs have a fee associated when enrolling into this program. It depends on the program length or the scope, but some provinces uh, do offer financial assistance depending on your legal status or circumstances. I have to say that begin your search. If you're interested in these bridging program, begin your search, do a Google search, search online, contact your local immigrant service organization, contact the government website, explore the universities and colleges of the province that you're moving in. Many institutions offer bridging programs to help students transition into higher education or adapt to new academic system. Consult career uh, uh, counselors. In Canada, there are government funded programs aimed at helping immigrants or helping a refugee bridge the gap in their education and skills. Check your community colleges, check the language schools for these bridging programs. Above all, I would like to advise you to make sure that you choose a bridging program that will help you gain a recognized license or a certificate that is relevant to your profession. If this is not the case, you may risk spending time, you may risk even spending money on a course without improving your employment credentials in Canada. Here on the screen, I'm going to show another example, which is Crossover, a bridge for success for immigrant professionals. Um, it's a wonderful bridging program. And this is for all internationally trained immigrants and refugee professionals in Canada. This is from New Canadians TV Network, and they invite you to attend this crossover the first of its kind virtual conference, actually, that will help you reestablish your career by bridging the gap between your international qualifications and the Canadian job market. We're going to share a link of this in the chat box for you, of course, uh, so you can check it out, uh, check that out later. Um, so don't miss this opportunity to connect, learn, and fast track your career integration in Canada. Now we spoke about. I show you. I showed you a few bridging programs uh, earlier. Um, some are free, but I mentioned that some of these might have a fee associated with enrolling into this program. But I have to say that some provinces may offer financial assistance depending on your legal status and circumstances, of course. However, the government offers financial support to learners who are Canadian citizens or permanent residents. Some of these uh, are. Um, include scholarship, loans, and grants. And I have included here a, a link. Of course, I will share this later on with you guys. Also, there are institutions like Windmill Microlanding that offer micro loans to help you pay for your training or foreign credential recognition. Um, you can visit their website later on and uh, find out what they have and, uh, uh, and how you can connect with them. But of course, as I as I promised, everything will be shared. A list of resources will be shared at the very end. Moving on, we're going to talk about micro credentials. We talked about bridging programs, but now let's talk about micro credentials and what they are. Uh, the micro credentials are very useful in Canada, and they are short courses designed to address the labor market or community needs. And they provide wonderful learning opportunities to further 
your employment or your education. These micro-credentials are actually developed with employers and industries, and they allow learners to get the skills they need. Micro-credentials are cost-effective, they are very flexible, and making post-secondary education more accessible to diverse learners. They are a wonderful addition option for learners at any stage of their education and career journey, so they can gain the competencies to meet education and employer and employment goals. Um, whether you want to learn a new uh, uh, to learn a few specific skills or completely switch your career micro credentials provide a flexible and impactful career for ever, a learning experience for everyone you should do these small courses to learn skills for promotion getting a micro credential not only boost your skills, but also shows your dedication to stay up to date. This makes you a great candidate for higher positions as your employer sees your readiness, sees that you're ready to excel in your role. Also, these micro um, credentials make you stand out from the crowd. So if you're looking for a job or if you want to, to have a career change, micro-credential is a guaranteed way to stand out. You can add the certificate you get from these credentials. You can add it in your resume to showcase your portfolio project in your application letters or your interviews. And of course, these are wonderful because you can fit your study around your life. Micro-credentials are short and adaptable. You can finish them on a weekend or you can finish them in a couple, uh, in a few days or a few weeks. They are wonderful to keep your skills developed, making them perfect um, uh, for individuals, for learners who work and have family commitments, uh, looking for short and flexible learning uh, uh, options. Let me show you an example um, of what I actually mean. So what you see on the screen is actually an example of cybersecurity risk assessment course. Um, for example, Let's say if I'm a computer programmer and I want a suitable skill development for my career advancement, right? And I'm looking for a, I want, I want to learn about cybersecurity or scam identification or artificial intelligence, right? I do a search and I find the relevant course that will help me get the job I want. There are dozens of programs out there, but please, please do your research contact the institution to find more information and how to apply. What you see on the screen is just a simple example of what I actually mean. These are short micro courses and you will get the knowledge and you will uh, give a boost to your resume. Now, another example is actually a free micro credential that you can get in Canada. This one, of course, is a free resource that will help newcomers develop the soft skills unique to Canadian workplaces, enhancing your employment profile too. These micro credentials focus on communication, collaboration, and adaptability. Three of the competencies, competencies at, uh, identified by the skills for success. Of course, this I will share the link to uh, to this uh, course uh, later on, as I promised. Moving on, everyone. Networking in Canada and information interviews. We'll talk a bit uh, what the, what it is, and I'll give you a few tips and tricks on how to how to do it. Um, I have to mention that networking in Canada, like in many other places, is crucial for, for professional growth and career advancement. And today I have a, a, a few ways, uh, several effective ways actually, to network in Canada. Finding a job, when you move, finding a job in a new city is very difficult. And apart from job search, Networking with people in your community is a great way. This is a wonderful way to meet new contacts and learn about jobs in your field. 
Here on the screen, I'm sharing a list of helpful steps that may help you better understand how networking works and, of course, how to start your professional uh, network. The first one is LinkedIn, and I highly recommend LinkedIn. Please, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, highly recommend to create one. Create and optimize your LinkedIn profile. Uh, join industry-specific groups and participate in discussions. Connect with professionals, both in your industry and beyond. Next is professional associations. Identify and join professional associations related to your field. Attend their events, attend the conferences or workshop. We have many workshops that, and we are connected with many professional associations and we do uh, many workshops in different professions and they are for free. Attend these network events, um, meet up, conferences, try to find where they are and connect with professionals in your industry industry and broaden your network. And of course, connect with friends from your school, uh, from your university network, attend those events, join online communities, connect with former classmates who may be working in Canada, do a little search, go on LinkedIn, do a little search, find out where they are, connect with them, talk to them. And another important step, and I highly recommend this too, when you move to Canada, Volunteering is a huge part. Offer your time and skills to your local community or your professional organizations. There are many opportunities for volunteering in Canada, and it is a great way to meet people, make a positive impact, and showcase your abilities. Also, another one that I highly recommend is informational interviews. Request interviews with professionals in your industry. Use these meetings to learn about the Canadian job market. Gather their insight and expand your network. And of course, there's many local, local meetup groups. And I've seen many local meetup groups, even on, on Facebook, um, LinkedIn, there, of course, there is another website called meetup.com for groups that align with your interest or your professional interest. Attend the relevant meetups and exchange ideas. Of course, there are other, other ways you can do it, like business networking group, or industry conferences, online networking platforms. As I said, beside LinkedIn, there are other forums that you can join, discussion board or any other uh, websites that have professional uh, information for you to connect. Then we have uh, coffee meetings. Ask to go for a coffee with uh, some professionals that you admire and you would like to learn from them, right? Um, attend career fairs. There's many. When you move to Canada, you will find out that there's many career fairs um, and they're always marketed in LinkedIn or Facebook or other social media platforms. Attend these uh, career fairs because they bring together employers, recruiters, and there's job seekers. And they offer an opportunity for you to, to network and explore uh, uh, job opportunities. And of course, uh, social media. We know we have Twitter X, we have Instagram and other social media platforms platform, uh, please participate and connect with individuals that share uh, the same profession interest as you. I spoke a bit in the, uh, on the previous slide, I spoke a bit about the informational interviews and coffee meetings and how important they are to network and open and make your network a bit bigger. Uh, the informational interviews is an informal conversation um, and we usually call these coffee meetings because you invite someone for a coffee and these can last not more than 20 or 30 minutes. With the person, these are usually done uh, with a person that works in your career field or in the field that interests you. It is not a job interview. And the purpose here is not to find a job, right? The purpose is for you to get that inside information on the job you want. And on the screen, you're going to see a few questions that you can ask during this chat. How did your career path take you to this job, right? Or what do you enjoy most about your job? Or what qualities or what certifications do I need to get a job in this in this field? I will share these with you in the in the attached uh, file. Uh, so, uh, but if you want, you can take a screenshot as well. 
And I say that this is very important to do once you move in Canada or even now, if you have not moved yet, try to connect on LinkedIn with uh, with uh, people that you um, from your from your uh, profession. It is very important to do this. As we conclude our presentation, everyone, I would uh, like to highlight the crucial role role um, of utilizing the pre-arrival services to enhance your competitive edge for success in Canada. Highly recommend arriveprepared.ca. Of course, sign up through our website for more information on employment, uh, register for pre-arrival services, engage in networking and information interviews, but please explore our website, dedicated website for more services that we offer for free for you. If you have not moved to Canada yet, um, please sign up for these free uh, uh, resources. And I would like to stop a bit and talk about the Settlement Online Pre-Arrival, SOPA, is a program that I work with. And this is a network of six settlement agencies across the country. We deliver training to prepare you, to prepare immigrants for successful integration into the Canadian labor market. We offer different courses, facilitated, self-guided, but also we have many events events such as webinars like this, networking events, employer events, and beside our events and virtual courses, we offer one-on-one -on -one employment counseling sessions. Please, if you have not um, um, done this yet, and if you're planning to move soon to Canada, and if you have been approved to move to Canada, this is the, uh, the one website that you need. So register today for these services. And I have to say thank you to everybody. We conclude our, this is it. This was our presentation. Thank you for uh, for being here and listening to me. And uh, to you, Gerald. Thank you, uh, Raymonda. You uh, shared uh, many valuable insights and you spoke about many things that uh, newcomers could do before and after they arrive to help them uh, build a network here, make a career, uh, and uh, benefit from all the resources. And uh, it's such an amazing service that uh, pre rival services such as uh, your organization, SOPA, uh, your program is offering. And uh, it's uh, very uh, beneficial for newcomers to uh, make use of these services. Uh, you mentioned uh, one of the things you mentioned as well was career fairs. I remember when I moved to Canada 13 years ago, I used to go to career fairs, even if they didn't have any jobs, because it helped me uh, present myself, uh, talk to employers and uh, see how how they react. And I uh, gradually could improve uh, my presentation for it. And also uh, sometimes companies, they might not have a job, but uh, you impress them so much that they keep in touch and uh, they create a job for you. Raymonda, before uh, uh, continuing our webinar, uh, uh, just uh, one question. In your role at SOPA, you, uh, you're a foreign credential uh, recognition navigator at SOPA. Uh, I'm sure you deal with newcomers daily, uh, uh, helping them uh, on, on their journey. Uh, briefly, what, uh, uh, what can you mention uh, or what common mistakes uh, can you uh, mention that you see newcomers making uh, before they arrive in, in, in Canada that could uh, hurt them or create uh, meaningless obstacles uh, in their in their path? Yes, that is correct. The general advice actually that I give to newcomers uh, to help them during their transition into the Canadian workforce is don't underestimate the importance of work experience in Canada. I understand it is not easy to find a job right away, but get local work experience by participating in volunteering opportunities, find co-op program or bridging programs like the one that we spoke today. And another thing that many newcomers overlook is their credential recognition. Make sure that foreign credentials are recognized in Canada. Newcomers should explore the process of credential evaluation and, if necessary, consider additional education or certification. This is, is, is very important. 
Thanks, Raymonda. One uh, other question. I can see a few comments about uh, who is eligible for uh, free rival services or can make kind of use of these resources that you mentioned in your presentation. Uh, someone was asking if uh, tourists who are in Canada on a tourist visa can benefit or mm -hmm. Uh, if they are still overseas, but they haven't maybe applied for immigration. So who is... Uh, no, unfortunately, and for, yes, um, I understand. Unfortunately, tourists are not eligible for that. Uh, but um, you should have received a letter from the government of Canada uh, approved to immigrate to Canada. Um, otherwise, uh, new um, visitors are not eligible, unfortunately. <laughs> Thank, uh, thank you, uh, Raymonda. Uh, I can see a few questions coming from the audience, so uh, keep up the uh, keep the questions going. So we'll uh, try to answer them uh, one by one. And uh, now I want to invite uh, two amazing immigrant professionals, uh, Vivian Atiba, who is a former uh, SOPA client, and also uh, Gautam Biswanathan, who is. Uh, a member of uh, who is a journalist by profession and uh, a member of the new Canadians uh, team. So uh, welcome, Vivian and Gautam. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Vivian, let's start uh, with you. Uh, Raymonda was presenting about the SOPA program and she also spoke about uh, uh, all of the uh resources and steps that newcomers uh, could take uh first uh, please introduce yourself i mean wh uh, when did you arrive in canada and uh, if you can tell us also about your personal experience as a former sopa client who made use of these services thank you so much hello everyone good morning good afternoon good evening depending on what time zone you're joining us from and i'm so glad to be able to share my journey with everyone uh, my name is vivian atiba i am a settlement practitioner with the grand prairie center for newcomers and um, i arrived canada march 15th, 2022, at about 8 a.m. I can never forget because that was such a memory <laughs> um, date for me. And um, yeah, so it's been a great experience working and living in Canada, I must say. And um, I would like to share my experience. I always tell this story that so far puts me on the right path. I can never overemphasize that. Um, so prior to um, getting my PPR, when I knew I was going to be coming, moving to Canada, what I did was I ensured I registered for SOPA and um, I was very active. I made sure I participated in um, the employment counseling, the soft skill courses, because um, I would tell, I would say that, um, yeah, it helped me because I was able to um, create a resume before I came to Canada. And um, I would say I landed my first job in Canada six weeks upon arrival because I already had a resume. Um, yeah, I was guided already on how a Canadian style resume looked like. And um, I was prepared, you know, I sensed the resume and um, I was able to land my first job as a care technical support um, specialist with um, Sutherland. And yeah, so I'll say it's, it's been a great journey, you know. And um, another thing I would say that also helped me in this journey was having a to-do list, you know. So I would write out all I needed to do and um, once I was able to achieve, I would strike that out. So as little as I need to um, go and shop, I would put it there. I need to go to the market. And once I was done, I would cross that out. Um, so that also helps me um, prepare myself um, for this journey to, um, to Canada. Yeah. Perfect. Congrats on uh, landing a job as well after six weeks of, uh, and that shows how uh, uh, prepared you arrived uh, with the help of SOPA and other steps maybe uh, you took. Uh, so taking uh, or uh, being part of uh, SOPA courses, the, the program was a, was a great step for you, obviously. If you can briefly mention two, three uh, uh, 
uh, key steps or the most uh, important two, three steps that uh, newcomers could also take to help them uh, arrive prepared? Uh, okay, um, I would say that first of all, um, once you are eligible to sign up for SOPA, please go ahead and do so. It just helps you to ease a lot of tension, a lot of pressures, a lot of uncertainties. You're moving to a new place, you don't know anyone, so it's really good you take that first step. Secondly, just like Ramonda has uh, mentioned, um, please be active on LinkedIn. Have a very up-to-date um, profile um, on LinkedIn. And then thirdly, have a great network. Like I can't overemphasize how great networking is. Networking has landed me some of the jobs I have done in Canada. So it's really, really important. So I'll say those three steps, yeah, would help you um, to settle very well. Um, in Canada. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to you, Gautam. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, please uh, introduce yourself. I know you obviously very well, but uh, <laughs> please introduce yourself to our uh, viewers joining us from different parts of the world and uh, tell us uh, what you do professionally. When did you arrive in Canada? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, firstly, uh, hello to everyone uh, who is on this uh, webinar today. Where are you coming from? I'm hoping, I hope you all look forward to making Canada your new home. Uh, Gerard, thank you for inviting me as, as part of this webinar. Absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Gautam Vishwanathan. Uh, I am Indian origin, but I was raised in the Middle East in Oman. I believe some of you are indeed uh, tuning in from the Middle East today. Uh, I'm a journalist by profession, and I have about 10 years of experience or had before I came to Canada. Uh, Vivian, of course, uh, found work in, in six weeks after coming here. It took me a lot longer. Uh, one of the things you will hear when you come to Canada is that every immigrant's journey is different. And it's true. Uh, it took me about six to eight months to find work here. That, that's the thing. Um, and yeah, so I think in that time, what you require is to be patient and, and to not give up on your Canadian dream. It does take time, but in the end, you will get what it is that you deserve. All you've got to do is work hard and then stay the course. Uh, very true, uh, Gautam, that uh, every immigrant journey is different. And uh... There's no one solution that uh, fits everyone. So it, that's why it's important to have a strategy that uh, includes, incorporates different elements and uh, pre-arrival services such as SOPA is one of uh, those elements, obviously, and uh, other steps uh, that uh, Raymond also referred to, like uh, informational interviews, cafe meetings, uh, and uh, uh, mentoring and bridging programs uh, help with that journey. Uh, Gautam, uh, I know uh, you, uh, uh, because I know your your journey, I know that you uh, are taking micro credentials in uh, in Canada. Can you yeah. uh, explain a bit, uh, can you talk about the, the micro credentials that you're taking? How do they help you upskill uh, and uh, increase your chances or, or generally newcomers' chances of employability? Sure. So um, currently there are two credentials I'm doing, or one that's, that I recently finished. The second is an ongoing one. Uh, so the first credential I finished is something called uh, inclusive journalism. It's basically, I would suggest it for any journalist or any creative professional who wants to come here and work in that field, because it gives you a 360 degree view of, of what you can expect uh, in, in, in this country. You know, So for example, we had journalists tuning in from all over the place, all the way from Quebec uh, in, 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 the, in the East to, to Vancouver and British Columbia in the West. And you really do learn so much because you get perspectives from, from people from different walks of life, you know. You get to understand how to deal with the different communities here, how to interact with them, how to be respect, respectful. Because Canada, of course, is a multicultural country. Uh, the, the population diaspora is very different to what you might find back home. And therefore, it's important to treat everybody with the same amount of respect and, and at the same time, may respect their cultures and, and their personal space. And that's one of the most important things uh, that, that I've learned. So uh, I would recommend this to any creative professional or journalist who's coming here. Please sign up for the micro-credential in journalism or inclusive journalism course. It's taught by Seneca. Uh, of course, it is it is uh, it is a paid course. But that being said, the 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 money that you put up front is 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 a small amount in in terms of what you would get in terms of experience and 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 knowledge. And that is what Canada really values. It of course counts towards your Canadian experience as well. When you see when employers see that you've done, done micro-credentials, they see that you are keen on working in this country, you are keen to upskill yourself, and you are serious about finding work uh, in, in, in this country. That's the way I would put it. The second thing I'd like to, like to touch on this a little bit briefly, if you'll allow me, uh, in, during the question-answer session, is I'm also learning French. Now, I, I know that a lot of questions... Yes, are, 
yeah so a, a lot of the a lot of the questions in, in in the comments are indeed about how you can learn french um firstly as as raymonda mentioned in in her amazing presentation yes it does help be bilingual and if you guys have been on linkedin you will see that a lot of jobs say bilingualism is an asset that's something you'll find in a lot of job profiles on linkedin or on indeed or whatever uh, profile it is that that you use um some of you of course may have learned french uh, at school or at university uh, some of you are from francophone countries i see where people from tunisia and algeria of course you guys speak french as a first language to them i would recommend learning english as a second language because that really helps especially if you are going to you know francophone parts of the country quebec of course is where many of you might plan to go some of you also might plan to go to francophone cities outside of quebec there are i believe 14 francophone welcoming areas outside of quebec so please uh, look that up when you have the time um yes so uh, to answer your questions i know that a lot of you are asking whether you can start these programs from outside of canada uh, whether you can do so on a tourist visa unfortunately no you need to be present in the country and you need to be the permanent resident or a citizen of the country but the good thing is that it's all free it's paid for by the government and once you get that on your cv it really helps because clients uh, uh, employers are currently looking for clients who are bilingual who can deal with people across the country sometimes you don't understand the vastness of canada until such time as you actually come here and you realize that yes there are indeed people all over the country who who do, who require to learn french who require to speak french uh, i would of course recommend it to anyone who who were to come here you yeah, got them very uh, briefly uh, someone is asking also about uh, uh, other languages uh, because uh, we are talking in, in during this webinar when we are saying bilingual we mean the official two languages of canada english and french Yeah. But someone, uh, one of our viewers, uh, uh, Humair uh, Siddiqui, is asking about uh, how beneficial uh, are other languages uh, uh, other than English and French uh, in increasing uh, newcomers' employability, for example. Oh, I agree, definitely. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, Gerard. Um, so, as I said before, Canada is a multicultural country, right? So, you will have people from Latin America whose first language is Spanish. You will have people from, from say, you know, um, from say Haiti who speak Haitian Creole. You will have people from the Middle East who speak Arabic or from from North Africa. Now, all of these people require services. They may not necessarily have the best language skills, you know, when it comes to communicating with people, but they still require services. So, for example, if you work in a hospital. right or if you plan on working in a hospital uh, somebody comes to you and says listen do you speak arabic because i don't we have we have patients here who don't speak the best english so yes of course you can say yes i speak arabic or i speak urdu or i speak hindi or i speak swahili because like i said multicultural country you're going to have people from all over the place so uh, don't discount the fact that you speak in another language don't discount the fact that your mother tongue may not be english or french please make it a point to highlight this in your resume as well depending on where you're applying for jobs if you're applying for say a settlement agency like so many we have in canada they of course offer multilingual services you have services in arabic chinese tagalog farsi so obviously they will want people who are multilingual it's the same in a hospital is the same in hospitality it could be any profession that's essentially customer facing Well, yeah, uh, it's very helpful, like, especially with companies that are expanding into other markets. And you, uh, if you know that language, uh, then uh, you would be very uh, valuable uh, for those companies to work for those companies. Uh, Vivian, I'll uh, come back to you. Uh, networking was one of the things that uh, Vivian mentioned in her presentation, and uh, we all know as newcomers. and immigrants to canada the, how important networking is were you familiar with the concept when you immigrated uh, and uh, how did you use networking to make uh, connections and friends in canada i thank you so much for that question um no i wasn't familiar with networking in fact it was absolutely new to me um but how i was able to use this um to my own benefits was first of all i had an up to date linkedin profile and then i joined some groups some professional groups and um and even my university groups and even my former workplace in nigeria i joined a group and um so through that group i was able to meet with people who had already come to canada and um they were able to i would say they were able to hold my hand um they were able to share job um like when they were job offers they were able to guide me um they even offer like preparatory preparatory like assistance like um if you need help with someone who is already in a field and you're interested in being in that field um speaking with them having like chats or coffee meets most of my interactions were um zoom 
I had quite a number of Zoom meetings with a few people and um, they were able to help, you know, shed more light on what they do and how I could be part of that organization. So yeah, that was how I was able to use networking to my advantage. Thanks, Vivian. Uh, Raymonda, uh, there's a question from uh, Pierre in uh, in the audience. Uh, he's asking if you can expand a bit more on uh, uh, coffee meetings. Uh, you mentioned coffee meetings uh, during your presentation, which is one one uh, maybe other uh, uh, word for informational interviews as well. It, it could be done yes. over coffee. Uh, yes. Can you, can you explain how uh, a coffee meeting or any informational interview works in practice? Yes, um, very good question. Thank you. So as I said, informational interviews, or as we say, uh, call them coffee meetings, um, they're usually done uh, over coffee, of course. You invite uh, a professional, um, someone that works in your career field or the field that you're interested in. Of course, this is not a job interview, as I mentioned, but um, the purpose is to get more information from this person. For example, uh, just like Gerald mentioned uh, previously about career fairs and how important it is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention an, uh, an experience uh, of mine. When I attended the career fair a long time ago, when I moved to Canada, um, I met with amazing uh, uh, people that worked in the field that I was interested in and uh, they shared with me their business cards uh, because uh, we didn't have LinkedIn at that time we had business cards and um, I called a few days after I called one of them and asked if they if I could have a meeting with them a short quick meeting at a Tim Horton at a coffee uh, shop and discuss about the, um, the 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 field they were working in because it was the field that I was interested in working in, um, and so I had a few questions prepared for them. Uh, what is the biggest challenge? Uh, what uh, what, what do I need? What important qualities do I need to be successful in this job or, or share with me work experiences or where can I find job postings or any recommendations they had for me for training or certifications, right? And it was such a huge help. And I gained, I gained many friends uh, during those uh, coffee meetings and, of course, the career fair. And uh, I actually ended up finding a job after that. This is a network, right? It's a networking meeting. And also volunteering. I continue to volunteer. And I have volunteered from the moment I, 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 I moved to Canada. I found volunteering places. And it's very easy. You can go to the nonprofit organizations like the ones and uh, that I'm working with and ask what volunteering opportunities they have for you. You can volunteer in food banks. You can volunteer in the seniors, senior care centers. There's many, or libraries, libraries, or or community college. There's many places that you can volunteer. And another example that I have done is volunteering at my kids at my children's school. I volunteer. I volunteered uh, into the uh, in their classroom, um, and also this is for me to, of course, make friends practice English uh, skills and, of course, um, uh, having those experiences, right? Gaining that Canadian experience to add in your resume. Yeah, very, uh, very uh, helpful advice. Uh, even I, when I uh, went over 13 years ago, I moved to Canada, I did have information interviews and that was a new concept for me. Networking uh, itself was a, a totally new yeah. concept for me. And uh, I was uh, one of the advice pieces I was given at that time to meet the publishers of the big media companies in Toronto, which uh, I come from Lebanon. Uh, it's not uh, uh, it's not common there. No one they even even will not uh, take your call or reply to your email. But here I was able to meet uh, to meet uh, the publishers of uh, or the news directors of the biggest uh, media outlets in. And not that, not necessarily that results in a job, but it's it's your opportunity to learn, to make connections, and to to yeah. uh, build your uh, your network, and uh, and that will down the road will open to opportunities. Opportunities. And one, yes, and this is one I, other comment I will make that uh, building a network shouldn't be just to get a job uh, on that short term benefit of uh, uh, as soon as possibly within days or weeks. I need to 
get a job, but uh, it's a lifetime uh, investment. Uh, yeah. Quality people you meet, uh, whether they are in your profession or not, uh, it's beneficial uh, to have them in your network and uh, and life is a two-way. You might help them, they might help you, and uh, that's how you progress in Canada. We have a few, very few minutes, uh, so I will... Uh, I'm just going through the questions. If uh, you, uh, if there's any questions uh, that we missed, there's a question about the business cards. I would uh, even <laughs> you mentioned uh, Ramona, but still in, with LinkedIn, I would advise any newcomer to print a business card. Uh, you don't yeah. need to be just your name, your uh, profession. Let's say in Gotham's case, journalist in or uh, customer service. Let's say. Uh, 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 official or, or whatever, like whatever your profession is, that will not change. Your ho Canadian phone number and your email address, your personal, those will not change. And uh, if you meet someone, even if you connect on LinkedIn and stuff, still uh, give hand uh, your yeah. business because you want to make For sure business, that you yeah. remember. I had to mention that the business card should include your LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account yet, please open one and utilize it and add your link. And if you use so other social media channels like, uh, well, let's say, TikTok or Instagram, right? Um, add that as well. Don't be shy, right? Make your connections. And um, I wanted to add something else uh, for uh, for the volunteering. There's a few volunteering questions. If you are approved to move to Canada, um, you start your research now, even though you're outside Canada, start your research for volunteering opportunities. There's many volunteering opportunities that you can actually do online. Do your research, okay? Um there's many opportunities. Like, for example, there's charityvillage.com as a website. Like, I'm just, I just thought of it now. Um, and they have many opportunities, volunteering opportunities for uh, newcomers to Canada. Start your research now. And uh, just to complete your point, uh, Raymonda, every city in Canada or every region has their own volunteer organization. So, yeah. Even just by a, by a simple uh, Google search, you can, uh, if you're landing in Calgary, for example, search for Volunteer Calgary or Volunteer Alberta, and you will find the closest uh, organization that uh, opens the door for you to some volunteering, strategic volunteering opportunities that could help you further uh, relaunch your career and establish yourself successfully in Canada. So I will give each of you 30 seconds uh, to uh, say any final uh, advice or uh, or tips, uh, maybe one tip, one one uh, one advice uh, to our viewers. So I'll start with uh, with Vivian. All right, I was just going to add that if you people would want to like transition into other fields, you want to move into IT, you want to go into nursing, feel free to go on LinkedIn and search for people in that field in Canada. And please be bold and confident. Send them a connect. Um, I hardly get rejected. Like, just, hi, I would like to connect with you. I'm new to Canada, and I want to transition into the IT space, and I just need some tips. And people are always glad to help. Thank you, Vivian. Uh, Gautam, any uh, last uh, one, uh, last tip to the viewers that you want to say? Yeah, the most important thing I would say is be patient and persevere. Um, finding work in Canada is a multi-pronged approach. Some might think, okay, it's only LinkedIn, it's only uh, learning French, it's only uh, after attending information interviews. It's not. You require a multi-pronged attack in order to get your job in Canada. One more thing I see a lot of people are asking where to find free micro-credentials. I would suggest go to quicktrain.ca. It's a government-funded website. All the micro-credentials that are free. Uh, but you can only do them once you arrive in Canada. So please keep that in mind. Uh, uh, thanks, Gautam. If you can type it in the chat as well, the way, they can uh, maybe uh, save it. Uh, Raymonda, uh, any last uh, kind of parting words or advice? Yes, of course. Um, yes, uh, before we close it, uh, we are going to share that file with everyone. The file uh, has all the resources that I covered today. Uh, and a few links for you to check out later on and do your research. Uh, but also to close it, I have to say that uh, stay open to learning. If uh, to those of you who are soon moving to Canada or maybe you recently arrived, 
don't hesitate to seek support when needed and remain patient and positive. And also, if you're planning to move to Canada, reach out to us, arriveprepared.ca. The pre-arrival services are there for you. Utilize them. Your journey to Canada is not just about finding a place to live, but is about building a prosperous future. And the possibilities in Canada are endless. So I'm sure that you will have success. Best of luck on your Canadian adventure. Thank you. Thank you, Raymonda. Uh, I know we're uh, almost over. So thank you, Raymonda, for your very uh, informative presentation. Thank you, Vivian and Gautam, for your uh, uh, for sharing your experiences, your tips and uh, with our viewers. Uh, I'm sure uh, your uh, answers helped our viewers a lot in planning uh, the information you presented will help our uh, attendees today a lot uh, and whoever watches this video later to plan a, a more successful journey to Canada. So uh, thank you once again for your time and for your uh, uh, all the advice you shared. So today's webinar was uh, called Gain a Competitive Edge for Career Success in uh, Career Success Before You Arrive in Canada. I hope we uh, all the presenters today uh, shared lots of tips and uh, information, advice, uh, resources. So I hope you can use all of these uh, joint pre arrival services such as SOPA to uh, also prepare for your journey before you arrive in Canada. We will share uh, a recording of this webinar so you can watch it again or share it maybe with other uh, others who are uh, on their way to Canada. So they can watch and they can benefit as well. And we will also share that resources document within that email. So keep an eye in the next uh, few hours in your inbox uh, for an email from uh, us, New Canadians. So uh, that uh, has the recording of this webinar and also the resources document. Uh, the time was short. Sorry, we maybe we couldn't answer all of your questions. So that's uh, one more reason for you to join SOPA so that SOPA counselors could work with you and answer all the questions uh, that you have and also feel free to connect with uh, on linkedin with uh, me and uh, with with uh, the panels as well if i may say that so that uh, we could uh, help you in whatever ways we can so uh, last uh, few reminders uh, this webinar was in collaboration with sopa so uh, we thank uh, raymonda and sopa for uh, coming here uh, they are our friends and so we we're thankful for them for the time and for the information uh, that helps uh, our audience uh, in, uh, who are still overseas to prepare their journey and another reminder of our uh, virtual conference for bridging programs that is happening on uh, february 24th uh, it's called crossover uh, it will uh, help connect you with uh, many bridging programs that uh, could help you with, uh, depending on your professional background, but also there will be many other opportunities to network with other, other immigrants, attend uh, panel discussions uh, and workshops that regardless of where you're landing in Canada will be beneficial for you to uh, better prepare. And uh, you can uh, either scan the QR code or just go to the URL newcanadians.tv slash events where you will uh, see the event and you can register. It will also be included in the resource document that we will share with you. Uh, lastly, a uh, couple of words uh, with, uh, on New Canadians. Uh, as you heard during the webinar, there's a lot of stuff that you, uh, you can do before you arrive in Canada and also after you arrive. And there are lots of uh, organizations and supports available such as SOPA and uh, other uh, organizations. Uh, we uh, on New Canadians talk about these uh, these services, these, these resources, and uh, some of the steps you can take to uh, ensure a successful journey. So connect with us uh, through the different platforms. If you're already in Canada, you can watch us every week on Omni Television. And in Canada and anywhere in the world, anytime, ob uh, obviously, you can catch us on our website, newcanadians.tv, or our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash at newcanadians. Uh, you can also follow us on social media, uh, on our social media platforms, not to miss uh, other webinars that we'll, we will be organizing or we regularly organize with uh, many of our amazing partners such as SOPA uh, to help you in different areas of your immigration journey. So connect with us uh, on uh, all the social media channels and also on the Telegram messaging app. And uh, the best way also is signing up for our newsletter so that you get invites to uh, career fairs. Uh, that was one of the questions uh, 
asked in the session, uh, career fairs, uh, other networking opportunities and conferences in person or virtual such as crossover that I was talking about. And if you follow us on YouTube, uh, please make sure to hit the bell icon so that you don't miss uh, any live sessions and other uh, important videos that we upload there. So thank you once again to all the viewers who joined us from different parts of the world. I, I saw many countries, including from my home country, uh, Lebanon. Uh, so I'm happy that uh, people were able to join and to follow us. Uh, one last reminder, we will share this recording, uh, the recording of this webinar, and also the links that Raimonda mentioned and and uh, uh, Gotham and Vivian mentioned as well in a document uh, that will be part of an email uh, that you will receive within uh, the next uh, 12 hours in your remote. So keep an eye and, uh, and all the best with your immigration journey.